uh, how well they uh, thank you so much for your time it's a great thank pleasure you. to have a chance to ask your questions about uh, uh, different levels of employees culture uh, first of all uh, today we uh, argued a bit with businessman Sergei Vrinilovich, what is more important for real effective uh, uh, company? Uh, a sense of emotional drive or very clear uh, scripts um, in patterns of uh, uh, behavior in different situations? Hmm. What should we do for making our teams real uh, good, real effective? Hmm. Well, it's... an it's a very good question, and it's interesting you're, you're asking, is it better to have emotional drive or is it better to have scripts? I would actually argue it's better to have both, but to have emotional drive lead to the scripts. Mm -hmm. So connect with scripts people. Is first. Uh, emotional drive is first. Oh, yes. So because we have emotional drive, then we ask the question, because of our convictions, because of our values, mm -hmm. then what scripts should we create for what situations? It's clear, yes. Um, according to your books, uh, you distinguish five levels of mm -hmm. employees' culture. What transition between these levels is the most difficult, as uh, mm. you see it? The hardest one, just from my experience mm -hmm. and from the data that we have, is between level three and four. So level three is, I'm great, I'm great and you're not. Mm -hmm. And then level four is, we're great. And, and the reason that seems to be so hard to get over is twofold. One is the way we run organizations is actually set up to hire for stage three, reward stage three, promote stage three, educate stage three. So if someone is in stage three and they get their master's degree, they're typically even more in stage three than they were before. So organizations are really set up to, to perpetuate it. And the other problem is it's just fun to be right. <laughs> Right. If, if I'm always right and I always get to win, that's fun. Yes, it's clear. But I thought that the first level is the, the most difficult because it's first step. And yeah, you you should to decide that I should to go to through uh, higher and higher. Yeah. It, so I have the least amount of experience with mm -hmm. level one. It uh, just mm -hmm. from my background, I, yes. I've I've seen it, I've studied it, but I haven't really experienced it mm -hmm. and. So the, probably the big distinction to make is between the levels overall in society and then the levels that you see in companies. Mm -hmm. And levels overall in society, there's a lot of level one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it. Uh, in my country, there's a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of drug abuse. There's a lot of alcoholism. And all of that can feed into level one. And there are parts of the city where I live that it's hard to get from place to place because there's just so many people that are trapped. Mm -hmm. But in organizations, level one doesn't appear very often because it just gets weeded out by companies. But you're right. Level one, getting over level one is very hard. I understand. Hard. It's clear. Uh, it's very uh, interesting for me question. Uh, do um, corporate parties uh, really bring stuff together? Corporate parties, do you understand what uh, no, I don't. mean? In our country, in Russia and Ukraine, uh, um, corporate parties is where a team uh, bring together for with alcohol, dance, and just oh, parties. parties, yeah. For stuff. Sure. Okay. Uh, how do you think, I, I think that in your country also is uh, corporate parties, but yes. without uh, this name, different yes. name, yes? Sure, sure. Okay. Do corporate parties is about uh, bringing team together? Or mm -hmm. is this form uh, greatly overestimated? How do you think? Well, it, it depends on the person and it depends on their personality. So people who are extroverts, they're naturally outgoing. They tend to like parties. I'm an extrovert. I like parties a lot. I think parties are a great way to meet people and bond and share stories over alcohol. People who are more introverted tend to just dread parties. Mm -hmm. they, they, they try to have a game face on. They pretend to enjoy themselves. They just want to go home. And so it depends on the person. So if a culture has, so if a company has a culture that says we always go out and have parties, that's going to encourage more extroverted people to want to work there. But then the other thing to bring up is there's often a lot of bad behavior that happens at parties. Uh, in my country right now, there's this whole Me Too movement that's happening where a lot of women are saying that at those parties, things happen that they didn't really appreciate and maybe men didn't appreciate how much they didn't appreciate it. So my overall advice is 
ask people, see what they want to do, and make sure that things don't get out of hand. Okay, it's a different situation. Uh, now we can make a corporate parties, and this situation, we understand that people don't want to uh, to do a corporate parties. So. Yes, yeah, it, exactly. And the, and it's so interesting on, on corporate parties. It, at the university where I teach, the program that I teach in is for adults. The average age is close to 40. And so we have a lot of parties, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of alcohol. And every year, someone gets arrested by the police for driving while intoxicated. And as a professor in the program, I stand up and say, don't drink and drive. <laughs> and yet it always happens. And so we do need to rein that in a little bit and make it more about the social and maybe less about the alcohol, yes. depending on the situation. Yes. Uh, my last question. Yeah. Um, if you had to say in a few words, what is the main idea mm -hmm. when you want, really want to make your team uh, truly effective? Two the things. Main thing. Two. Things. Yeah, two things. One is find your own sense of purpose and mission. Mm -hmm. And two is find the sense of purpose and mission of other people and then combine those. Okay, it's clear. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.